Hi there, my name's Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers and welcome to the seventh and final video in our Sparkle series. And as I expect you know by now, Sparkle stands for S for Sing, P for Patterns, A for Automatic, R for Rote, K for Knowledge, L for Landmarks and E for Enjoy. And today we're looking at that very last letter, E for Enjoy. So in this video, we're going to cover why enjoyment for the pupil, and for yourself for that matter, is so important in lessons and in learning, and also why it can sometimes be missing. I'm going to show you how to play the game basketball and what equipment you need, and also how to play the game stepping stones. And I hope that by the end of this video, you'll really be able to add some sparkle to your lessons. So let's start by taking a look at why enjoyment is so important. We know that the best conditions for learning are when we're in a state of flow. That's when the challenge is high, but can be seen to be achievable, and the threat level is quite low. So when we're focused, but really quite relaxed. We also know that the brain does tend to get easily distracted from what it's doing and tends to wander away. In other words, we have quite a short attention span and this is particularly true of children. An experienced teacher knows that a successful lesson has to contain a whole variety of activities and different ways of engaging the pupil. A lesson has to have pace and variety. But there is often so much that has to be crammed in to a single lesson that it's so easy for us to just forget that. We're just so intent on passing on the knowledge that we've got that the enjoyment and the fun kind of get missed out with the pupil maybe just sitting in one spot for the whole 30 minutes and having to do a lot, and I mean a lot, of cognitive work. I don't know about you, but I've sat in lectures and things like that and after about 20 minutes, you sort of need to get up, you need to shift, you need to move around and just for a minute and then you can sit down and refocus again. So in the same way, introducing a really short game can be a concise and manageable way of breaking up the lesson. And the game can have real purpose and real musically meaningful activity behind it. And I just want to share with you a couple of my ideas of these games. There are loads and loads more, obviously, but here are a couple that I find really effective. So this game is called Basketball, and I'm just going to get my equipment, my resources, and I've been having a lot of fun with it in lessons with younger players. So the aim of it is to improve their automatic recognition of those landmark notes, either the single landmark notes or the patterns. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. And all, all the games are about is reinforcing what is already known and building on something that has been introduced to them. So what you need is an empty rubbish bin like that. You need some small balls or little, um, little toys or activities. So I've got some of these squishy balls. I find that kids really love those. So I'm just going to squish that over there. Um, Here's another little toy, a duck that I've got. And also I've got a lion and I've got a frog. It doesn't really matter what you get, but just, just have something for the children to, to have there. So the third thing you need are the flashcards. And these are flashcards. As I say, they can be individual notes like that, or you can have patterns. And I'll talk more about the patterns in a moment. I'm just going to show you what I mean with the individual notes. Let me just put that, those ones down. So the, the empty um, rubbish bin um, is on the floor and the pupil has to hand these toys and items. And I'm just going to put it down here. I know you can't see it, but I think you can imagine it, can't you? And you show the pupil a note and there's two two ways you can do this either they just say the name of a note precisely treble c in this case and this is stage one and if they get that right they pick up um, a squishy and they throw it into the empty rubbish bin 
and for every one they get in there they get a point. More on that later. Um, the other way of doing it is that they say the name of the landmark note or they sing it, might or might not be possible, and then they play it. So they say it definitely and then they play it precisely and if they do get it right then again in goes one of the toys. Okay, um, so I've got a points chart. I'll show you show you one. Here's one I used in a lesson once with with a whole load of pupils, and it was also really good because I gave it a, an against the clock feel. So you can either set a timer. Come on, Lauren, you go in there as well. So you can either set a timer to add an extra excitement to it, um, or you can just kind of egg them on. Come on, come on, you've got to get it. You've only got a few seconds left. Just keep working, keep working. Up to you. But either way, it just puts a bit of pressure on and it keeps it really exciting and stimulating. OK, so that's your first game. That's called basketball. I'm just going to put the, that down a moment. And the second game now is called stepping stones. And this is really good for developing their, their oral ability and their ability to look at a pattern of notes and recognize it orally. So for this one, I'm just going to put those down and pick up these instead. Okay, so two resources, that's all you need really for these. One are floor spots, here they go. And you can get these on Amazon or whatever, they're just rubber floor spots. And you get the pupil to put them on the floor, I might use five or six of them, so they all get spread out on the floor like stepping stones. Let me put those there. And then on each one, you get one of these. And this now is a, um, using a landmark note, there is then followed by a pattern. And this is something I've developed um, recently from the wonderful Samantha Coates, who's the author and the creator of Blitz Books. So the floor spots are spread out like the stepping stones. You put one flash note, flash card on each stepping stone. The pupil then is standing on a home flashcard and you're at the piano and you play the very first flashcard do, do, do. but you play it in exactly the place it's written you play it starting on treble c and the pupil has to move in one step to that particular stepping stone and then you follow it with another one of the patterns that's on another stepping stone and of course you can go back and repeat stepping stones again really really good really gets them focused and you can see them standing there looking at these patterns and making a decision whether it was in fact uh, this pattern for example or was it this pattern yeah so they've both got three sounds and they that's a really good indicator to you whether or not they're hearing what they can see so just to wrap up We've looked at why enjoyment for the pupil and for yourself is just so important. We have to have fun. It's how learning happens. Um, and I've also shown you very quickly how to play just two games, one called basketball and one called stepping stones. So this is the end of our Sparkle series and I really do hope that watching it has helped you to get clearer about the different principles involved in teaching notation to beginners and to le young learners. And I hope it does help you to have your, give your lessons a bit more of that sparkle. Just like to say again, there isn't a single way of teaching notation, but these are principles and if you put your principles behind what you currently do, see how they match up, you will find that notation learning becomes easier for your pupils and therefore more enjoyable for all concerned. Now, if you want more inspiration from the Curious Piano Teachers, please do check us out and follow us on social media as we're here to help you. We're piano teachers here to help you as piano teachers. And don't forget to download our workbook that we've put together just to help you implement some of the sparkle ideas. The thing that really differentiates those who are successful in life generally from those who are not is action and consistency. Taking action and being consistent about taking that action and saying, yeah, I can get better, I can do more. 
But we do know it's not really very easy at all on your own. And that's why we created our membership site, The Curious Piano Teachers. So why not hop over to our website and find out whether our membership is currently open. And if it isn't, just pop your name in the box and we'll be in touch with you just as soon as we're open again. Until then, do enjoy your teaching. Bye for now.